Hello. In this section, I'm going to talk about two different instructional strategies you, that you can use to teach math vocabulary in class. Before I get started, I just want to remind everyone that the PowerPoint slides that I'm referring to today are available on the Georgia Department of Education website for you to download and use as you're viewing this video. Now we're talking about math vocabulary and, and one, of the, one of the aspects that we're, we're recognizing that it's important for kids to develop uh, math vocabulary in order to become proficient. And we also know that many kids will struggle to learn even the basic vocabulary associated with math. And th there's various impacts that this can have, but if you go into most high school classes with kids that are really struggling in math, kids with learning disabilities and so forth, and you begin to ask them some very general basic questions about math vocabulary. For example, what is a numerator, what is a denominator? Number one, if they can tell you what it is, their answers are often sort of at a lower level. For example, the numerator is the top number, the denominator is the bottom number. And although that is true, that's really not getting at what numerator and denominator mean, represent conceptually, and so forth. And if, if kids only can do that, that's likely indicative of, of um, mathematical conceptual uh, misunderstandings that can cause problems later on. So, so with this whole idea of math vocabulary, teachers must begin to look at different ways to teach it and strategies to help kids focus in their math vocabulary. Now one of the, one of the issues right now that we have in, in math vocabulary instructional strategies is that there hasn't been a lot done in that area as far as research. So we have to begin to look at how other content areas have taught math and successfully taught math in reading, social studies, science, and sort of incorporate some of those techniques into math. And again, we have to remember, if kids do not understand the language of instruction, they will struggle to learn what it is we're trying to teach. So we must begin again to look at evidence-based practices from other content areas and pull them in to the area of mathematics. So what I'm going to talk about are just two techniques in this particular section, writing about mathematics and then teaching word origins. So, with writing about mathematics, one of the things that, to keep in mind is any time that you ask students to write, whether it is in math or any other subject area, kids with learning disabilities and kids that are struggling, writing is a complicated task and therefore they need to have some support in place. But a good way to sort of alleviate some of their writing issues as w and get at math vocabulary are to use attribution charts or sort of tables. And basically what this is, is is some table in some format that allows students to put information in an organized fashion. Sort of think of it as um, uh, uh, almost a scaffold or a structure to help kids make see similarities and differences between certain vocabulary words. There's no set in stone attribution chart, but basically what it is is, is, is an area for students to look at so they think at, at characteristics, definitions, real life application, and so forth so that they can see things in an organized fashion. So attribution charts or tables are a good way to help kids sort of understand what it is we're trying to teach about certain words. Then the other thing I want to talk about is directed journaling activities. Now I, I call this directed journaling. Uh, I think we went through a long period of time where we spent a lot of time writing in math class. And I think it's important and it's a good way to see if kids are understanding the process or the concepts behind what they're doing, but at the same time, writing becomes very labor intensive for many of our kids. So we have to put things in place. A couple of things that we should take a look at is, number one, there should be specific expectations or parameters that they are using the appropriate terms. If your lesson is focusing on quotient, then the student should be required to use that word quotient and the teachers, we should not settle for the student saying answer. Use appropriate technical terms. Spelling should count. I know we're math teachers and oftentimes we don't, we don't think spelling should count, but again, we want to instill in our students the importance of vocabulary and by requiring them to spell it correctly is important. Now maybe well, an instructional scaffold you use is you give them a word bank or you help the kids spell the word, but spelling should count. Illustrations are important, but all too often in math we will allow a student to draw us a picture 
versus actually write out what it is we want them to make or to learn. So you can have illustrations, but they should be involved with narrative and some text along with it. Now, if you're going to do journaling activities, I highly recommend that they're directed journaling activities. When you're talking about kids, especially older kids with learning disabilities and are struggling to learn, motivation is an issue. And if you ask the student to say, write down what you learned today, you're asking for that student to write back, I didn't learn anything. So we need to be focused. And here's just some examples of focusing in a dir directed journaling activity. And these will change on the grade level, the content, and the students. But for example, you know, one up here, write about the differences and similarities between parallelograms, rectangles, and squares. Now what you've done is you focused in the student on what it is you want them to write about. you sort of given them a structure that then can support them in their writing. Another example, what happens to the circumference and area of a circle if the radius is doubled? And these are, these are just questions that are focusing the students' uh, thinking in what it is that you want them to answer versus just leaving it open-ended. But at the same time, these are open-ended in terms of they're having to provide you some answer. Now, that in mind, remember that in any given class, you're going to have some students that can get right at it and are going to be interested and motivated and, and ready to go. But you're also going to have groups of kids that this writing about math is even more negative than actually doing the math, so they're going to need some structure. Maybe you give them charts and help them fill them out. Maybe you do it with them, modeling it, demonstrating what it is you want. And one of the good things about this directed journaling activity is it gives the students the opportunity to practice using the vocabulary, which is what they don't get many opportunities to do in the course of their regular instruction. So, a third way that you can use is teaching word origins. Now this is important because, number one, it's not too complicated, doesn't take a lot of time, and you'll be surprised at how often uh, showing the kids the words behind the words actually helps the kids make sense and make those connections that we want them to make. And I've given a couple examples up here uh, for parallel uh, and you know para means alongside or near, diameter, the two parts of that word meter is a measure and di is a sort of across or through and you can see how that diameter then makes the word uh, or what, how the word diameter is and what it means. So teaching word origins, this is primarily for older students, but again, what you're doing is you're sort of laying the foundation of the importance of math vocabulary and sort of getting at, at, at why it is important for kids to, to be able to communicate and use math uh, appropriate and correct language. So sort of to summarize this, we must remember that understanding math vocabulary is one component of kids becoming proficient in mathematics. And if that's a component, then we must devote instructional time to teaching math vocabulary. This, the techniques that I talked about today of journaling activities, filling in attribution charts, or teaching word origins are just a, a couple of different ways to sort of help focus the kids on vocabulary and, and get to deeper understanding and helping for those kids to make connections. Because what we know is that oftentimes students will struggle with vocabulary and therefore teachers need to address that through various instructional practices. So I just want to remind everyone, the slides that I talked about and are making reference to are available on this Georgia Department of Education website for you to download and use while watching this video.